I think it's time for the Alabast Oracle. Oh, extra, extra, read all about it. New extra, ally extra. saves the day. Oh my goodness, this looks amazing. From the amazing guys who make the Alabast Oracle, six copper. Well, that's five Digsby holes. No, he does it for ten copper. Woo. That's that's one six of a dig. That's six tenths of a Digsby hole, or three fifths if you're rounding down. I'm gonna read the first one if that's okay, guys. New ally Go saves ahead. the day. Alrighty. The attack on Alavast via Dragon Cult left many reeling with damage to the city and its citizens, loved ones lost and injured. Onslaught by their foul white dra onslaught by their by their foul white white dragon may have led to even more losses, if not for the arrival of the Silver King. The Silver King charged upon the White Dragon. With an immense roar, the two engaged in combat while guards rushed citizens to safety. Eventually, the Silver King killed the White Dragon and let out a deafening roar, sending the Wyverns and their Dragonborn riders fleeing in terror. The city of Alavast owes its undeniable gratitude to the Silver King. If not for his arrival, there would have certainly been more casualties. This vital aid from a foreign power comes at a time when Alavas faced numerous dangers, not just from this latest attack, but from their ongoing war with the Fire Giants and reports of ships from Periton scouting along Alavas' coast. Alavas is facing threats on all sides. The time has come for Alavas to start seeking allies. Well, there has been rumor of, rumors of the Alavas City Council talking to Nomeria. It can be said with certainty that the Silver King is a force to be reckoned with. His salvation of the city shows he is willing to come to our aid. And Alavast City Council will be wise to thank him for his efforts in saving Alavast and taking steps towards earning his favor as an ally. The Alavast City Council put out a statement regarding the matter. Bork Bronzefang, he's got a big butt, haha, <laughs> big butt Bork's Bronzefang. Oh my god. I made that last little bit up though. Oh no. <laughs> oh my goodness. Sorry. What? Sorry, no, I'm, I'm a legit. No, no, you know, <laughs> I, hi, I'm Big oh. Butt Skinner. Remember that? Remember oh. that Simpsons joke? What? No, oh, I guess I heard you reading about the Silver King. Sorry. Whew. Oh, boy. Yeah, no. Oh, man. I'm good. I had some allergy problems. It's fine. Did no, you? we're good. Did you, uh, you doing okay? You're reading? Yeah, no, I think I'm good. Huh. Whew. Got it all out. We're good. I'm glad you're feeling okay, man. Glad you're feeling. I was worried. I was worried. <laughs> I was worried there for a sec, man. No, no, no. I'm good. Yeah, I appreciate you. Good looking out. Appreciate. I appreciate. No, dude, I appreciate you. I appreciate. I appreciate you more. But uh, what, what would you like oh, to read, dude? Yeah. I have to open it up, so let Connor read one while I go find the link, unless you want to give it to me. I'll read the missing persons bulletin. As a service to its readers, the Alabast Oracle is contributing to the recovery effort by printing a list of missing citizens with brief descriptions. If you have any knowledge of the whereabouts of the following individuals, please contact the nearest guardhouse immediately, in addition to the relations specified. Kicks. Ostrich Kenku. Middle-aged, patchy, salt and pepper plumage. Described by family and friends as nervous and twitchy. Enjoys thigh-high heeled boots. May be found with his head stuffed in the ground. Last seen fleeing his job as a street sweeper during the cultist attack. If found, please contact his landlord in the bristling bamboo complex and his rent is due, as his rent is due. Um, hey, uh, uh, Taka. Yeah? Can I pause you to let you direct you to the chat for a second? I was reading along. <laughs> My Gyazo done broke. I can't see. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to say it until I he see. sees it. Now I see. Yeah. That's one. Two. Yeah. That's a hundred. That's a hundred thousand bits. Six, yep. That's a hundred thousand bits. Thou that grand. All hail the bit boss, the return of the king. Newt's out for probate. Bow down to the Bow down to the Bird up. Well, um, uh, probate says, I can't wait for the Silver King to reveal that he's only engaged in combat because another dragon was there and he has no real intention of providing military aid. That's what I'm talking about, probate. Get in on the conspiracy. 
Yeah. Okay, uh, so you're. So you're. Are, are you? Is, is are, are probate and Remy? Are they both? Are, are you telling me that Ty Borpington and Remy are Silver King truthers? I'm. Uh, I'm just. I'm not saying anything. Is what I'm going. I'm just. Probate. I don't. Fuck, man. I... Forgive me. I don't know what to say. Uh, fuck, man. Holy shit, dude. Well, it's in truth, like the, the YouTube rates have been much lower lately because YouTube is in general, like just the, the ads this summer have not been great. And I think because of a lot of issues that's happening with there and like, it's just, it's just kindness like this is bewildering and i always say it but probate with the 100,000 bits dude yo thank you so fucking much for supporting us here at the uh, at the unexpectables dude like <laughs> i really appreciate like yeah and i and if i can get a little bit real here for five seconds here i bought a dog on friday right like mm -hmm. yeah. A year and a half ago, that was the last thing I could even fathom that I would be doing. You know? Like, my life was really out of control a year and a half ago. I was spiraling pretty hard before I even started streaming. And now I, I have a dog, and I actually... I'm following through on shit. I'm going to bed early so I can wake up early to take him out. I'm changing a lot of shit like this. And just kindness like fucking this is the... Like... It's fucking humbling, right? Like, I, is, is that a good way of fucking putting it? Yeah. It's fucking humbling, man. It really... Probate, thank you so much for the 100,000 bits, dude. Holy shit. Can we get a Newt Newt? Can we all Newt Newt for fucking probate, please? The whole chat, because he fucking loved Newt Newts. Alrighty? So let's do this, guys. Bird up. Hello. Wait, what are we doing? Whole chat's nuting for probate. Oh, nudes right. out for probate. And HBI2K is rating with a party of 65. Oh, they're rating at an awkward time. Uh, I saw him playing some uh, fucking Legend of Zelda earlier. He's playing some law, some laws. Legends of Zelda. Probate, oh, man. Thank you so much. Again, dude. I am so excited to not lose in the Blood Bowl game tomorrow. Snake, will you be there? Will you cheer me on? Nah. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta understand, like, you, you, you have to appear at the end and, like, tip your hat. As I go, I was about to go for the touchdown, and, like, it, it goes slow-mo and starts playing the theme of the series, okay? You know you, you, know you need to. I'll show up in, like... A trench coat and a fedora, and you'll hear like, and I'll just snipe your star player and then leave. No, don't do that. <laughs> like, <laughs> don't do that. Warm regards. You still feel bad about me killing your guy, don't you? Yeah, it was an accident. <laughs> Probate. I mean, you know what happened? Probate, you like messaged me, and Probate was like, "Hey, Taka, how are you doing?" And I was like, "I'm gonna fucking kill my friend's creature." Wait, that was, I was supposed to blame him. I just took more heat. I'm bad at yeah. this. Thank you so much, Probate, and I'm excited for my game tomorrow. I'm facing Tiki the Troll in the Bloodborne game in the Blood Bowl game tomorrow. I can't believe Destiny Marie's head exploded. Probate, no. Probate. Has like I think he has joke. I don't know if he has real or joke bounties, but the highest one right now is for Destiny Marie's uh, goblin character on my team. <laughs> well, thank you so much, dude. From the fucking bottom of my heart, man. Seriously. Sorry, forgive me. Can I just get a moment? Can you can you keep reading, dude? I just need a moment real fast here to collect. Myself. Yeah, Connor, you you go ahead. Or Connor, actually, do me a oh, favor. Yeah. Link me link me to it because I, I yeah, can't. I'm on. dumb. Yeah, hang on. Sorry, forgive me. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm... 
<laughs> no, let's take a minute. You're good. You're good. We got you, fam. Oh. There you go. All, All right. right so I'll keep sure. reading the. Uh, the yes, continue with your thing. Uh, we got Seth Raslian Jones, a bearded dragon lizard folk, uh, young adult red and brown scales, mohawk fin, only just starting to grow spines on her chin, may inflate throat when threatened, responds to Sarah Sassy Jonesy, last seen helping an elderly gnome couple take refuge in the sewers during the cultist attack. If found, please contact her guardians, Marcus and Cassandra Jones. Address available through the paper. Knock door. <laughs> Construct. Roughly four feet tall. One arm. Dented cranium plate. Pewter and porcelain plating with lapis filigree. An employee with the Alavas Postal Service. May still be in uniform. Enjoys knocking on doors. Last seen making deliveries to neighborhoods near the site of the battle between the Silver King and the White Dragon. If found, please contact the Alabast Postal Service Postmaster. Viridian Delure. Tiefling, green skin, ram-horned, lionish tail. Late 20s, roughly 6 feet tall. Described by family and friends as naive, oblivious, and not very bright. And this is starting to sound like one of my friends the characters. Oh, dear. <laughs> Here we go. Last seen practicing for the Alabast City Marathon despite the weather during the dragon attack and may have gotten distracted. If found, please contact her fiancé, Bellis Aberdeen, in the Upper Clerical District, Temple of Vetrion. Awesome. And a real quick shout-out, because in the middle of probate, um, uh, making me cry again. <laughs> Rosa 06 with the 200 bits. All hail the king. Thank you so much, Rosa 06. LeJake, for gifting that sub to Skullfar. Thank you so much for doing that, dude. Cryptic Sajin with 100 bits. Can I get a very special Unexpectables happy birthday to Michinia? She is an Unexpectables artist and a true gem here in the community. Can Borking Panic and Remy sing happy birthday to her so I can clip it? Also, Connor, Michi Michi Me. I don't. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but it got a real. How about, how about Panic sings that because Panic's the singer out of the three of us? And oh my god. Oh, wow. All right. But we're, we're all desynced, dude. We have to give it to one guy. <laughs> Hang on. We're going to have to sing individually if she wants a clip. Yeah, it's true. Actually, we'll take turns. And when I stop, someone else takes on the song, okay? Right. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, Borky, Remy, Panic. Okay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Uh, happy birthday, Michino. I'm never playing Love Live. <laughs> uh, oh HBI, thank you so much for the raid, dude. I really appreciate that. I'm glad you're streaming. Starstruck17 with the eight month resub. I'll need a before probate for that. Oh my. Oh my. The former bit boss just goes. Your power is strong, my lord. And Sethlands with an additional 10,000 bits. Northeastern Missouri Ranger. Raking it in. Oh, my lord. Hold on, hold on. Uh, Connor. Yeah. You have, to, you have to finish off my happy birthday now. You ready? Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Is this still for Michinia? Yeah, go ahead and do, do another one. Happy birthday, Michinia. I'm still not playing Love Life. Why not yeah. panic? Yeah! And many more. Because of course Remy would have to be like freaking Pavarotti or something. Of course. Uh, Want to read that? Would you like to read? Would you like to read Wervin Shadowed Streets? Me? Yeah. Uh, sure. Let's Let me just scroll up to it. I was gonna do the I, Gregor I, thing real, real, as real, their real, favorite character that I should. Real. real huh? You can do Gregor too, but real fast. I do want to touch base on this again. Sorry. Um, Seth Lance for the additional ten thousand bits. Holy shit, dude! Thank you so much. I don't know what we do to, to, for this, but it is incomparably kind 
And oh, I can answer that question for you, Kurt. You guys are super entertaining, and that's why they throw money at you because you're super entertaining and they like you and they want you to keep doing it. Okay, Flyers. <laughs> Someday I'll accept a compliment. Uh, <laughs> appreciate you. Yeah, Lauren, let's fucking take a compliment. Jesus. Seth Lanz, though, thank you so much for the additional 10,000 bits. And again, probate for the 100,000 bits. <laughs> I hope I win Blood Bowl tomorrow. Otherwise, it's all over for the two lads plus more. Hey, look, today he's a very kind oh, soul that you can appreciate and sing the praises of tomorrow. You destroy him. Oh, God, please read your thing. I gotta, I gotta do another shout out afterwards. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. So you want me to do the shadowed streets? Yeah. Weaver and Shadowed Streets, yeah. Holy shit. Weavern. Havoc filled the air and descended upon Alavast. Waverns controlled by riders grabbed citizens and attempted to fly off with them for some terrible purpose. News of the dragon cult attacks from the north were now experienced firsthand by Alavastians, fled down alleys and into buildings to try to escape the winged assault. Some were fortunate enough to have quick minds to keep their families safe and such as Dwarven Smith Shingahammer. I put everything in my house up against the doors and windows. One of those scaly turds nearly got in, but I booped it on the snout with my axe. Bugger thought twice, I figure, squealing as it backed out. Others fared less so, some unlucky enough to get, to get dropped in mid-flight, like Dan's Patters, who broke his leg upon hitting the cobblestone of the lower district. He has chosen not to comment on the traumatic event. The city was fortunate, however, in what defense could be had in its guards manning the ballista along the walls. With further aid from the arrival of the Killer King, Alavast has weathered this assault. Its citizens, guard and civilian alike, now work to try and rebuild the, the peace. In the turmoil, this may be a challenge. Awesome, dude. And uh, Bob Probe just said, Bosco, if you kept up, you'd know I was booted from the top 16 of the prelims with a 404 record. I'm strictly commentary now. What does that mean? Does that mean he quit? No, that, he didn't. That... Mean... <laughs> does that mean he stopped playing? Does that mean he's over? You... you shouldn't have put it that way. Now Probate's mad at you. Oh, no. All right, Probate, bring it on. We're good. <laughs> no, I understand. When you, when you can't do it... In anymore you go to commentary like a lot of people when they retire because they can't do it anymore they go into commentary oh you oh. perspective i think it's awesome i think no no no. it's a good position for probate i think that's an awesome spot for him to be in and i'm sure he'll succeed at it i love that you're so antagonistic with him it makes me so happy somehow <laughs> shall we read another article my friend i think it's time for the lady of livorosia oh my god holy shit Connor. Oh, goody. Wait, Con so who's, who's reading the people? Well, you and me will write, uh, oh, I, I I will play the first person, you play the second person, but Connor on, by tradition, is usually the Lady of Livrosia. Oh, okay, yeah. well then there we go. And we'll get to these amazing bit drops here in a minute again. Oh my fucking god. We've got a first. The Lady of Livrosia is addressing the city of Alabast as a whole. Uh, real fast, uh, Probate says, I guess that's why you went into voice acting, Bosco. I don't know what that means. Oh, yeah, no. I, get it. I went into voice acting because I'm good at what I do. So oh. don't worry about it. I also, I have a face for radio, so I'm like, I'm super ugly. So I need to be behind a microphone so I don't put this on TV. Yeah. If you must know. Natural talent comes at a price. <laughs> oh, for radio. I would know. Yep. Jesus. Anyway. Jesus fucking Christ. Right. So, Lady Liverosia. Uh, dear Alavast, I love you. You are such a beautiful city with such beautiful people. Each one of you, unique and precious. I am so proud of you who calls the city home. And I know how tough it can be some days to look with hope and confidence on the months and years ahead. Like many, I watched as our city was attacked. And it really bothered me a lot. I wish I could go outside and give you all hugs and thank you all for being so brave, but I'm usually not allowed outside, even during safe and peaceful times. Ugh. I want everyone to know that this was an, another scary situation that we found ourselves in, and sometimes it's hard to feel safe. Growing up in Alabast, you often see scary things like the recent dragon attack, 
the previous dragon attack, or the giant gelatinous cube incident. Even in these times, remember the writings of Liverosius St. Rogers. Look for the helpers. We'll always find people who are helping. To this day, especially in times of disaster, I remember St. Rogers' words. And I am always comforted by realizing that there are still so many helpers, so many caring people in this world. Stay strong in the spirit of love for your community, my dear Alabast. I love you. St. Rogers, I fucking love it. Oh my god. I love yeah, it. Yeah, that, that's, that's great. That's that's intense. Patron saint of being neighborly. Patron saint of wholesomeness. There's no one kinder. Uh, shall I take the next one? I'll, I'll do the, I'll do this one. Okay. Uh, and we'll get to these amazing bit drops here in a second. Dear Lady of Livrosia, I am in a bit of a pickle because apparently I am really super sexy to giant flying reptiles. I mean, it's not intentional and completely understandable, but it's still inconvenient when I'm wanting to hang out with my friend and he's like, oh, hey there, let's hang out. And I'm like, sure. And then some two-legged wing creatures thing is like, rawr, and getting up in my friend's business when I'm trying to talk to him, or he just wants to cast a friendly spell on me or something. I find all, the, I find all races sexy, but big dragon things aren't quite my style. So what I'm trying to say is, how can I let them know when it's just not appropriate? Sincerely, loved by lizards. So in my head, this is Borky writing to the of okay. would, you like me, <laughs> would you like me to re? Would you like me to reread it as Borky real fast? Yeah, uh, do it. I think you need to. Dear Lady of Livrasia, I'm a bit of a pickle because apparently I'm like really super sexy to giant flying reptiles. I mean, it's not intentional, it's completely understandable, but it's so inconvenient when I'm wanting to hang out with a friend and he's like, oh, hey there, let's hang out. And I'm like, sure. And then some two-legged wing creatures like, like, I'm getting up in my friend's business when I try to talk to him or he wants to just cast a friendly spell on me or something. I find all races sexy. I find all races sexy. But big dragon things aren't quite my style. So what I'm trying to say is, how can I let them know? It's just not appropriate. Sincerely, out love by lizards. Dear love by lizards, I love you. Oh shit! I understand oh. how it can. <laughs> I understand how it can be awkward when someone expresses unwanted affection for you. What you must do is make sure that you communicate in a firm and clear manner that while you respect them as a person, they need to respect your boundaries there is a language barrier, you may need to learn a few phrases in Draconic. One that might be useful is Thrick we Thrick, which, which you say it loudly and confidently, they know you are not implying consent for anything. Be careful of jealousy, since it often keeps people from acting with love. You may need to sit down and have a talk over a cup of tea with this person in a safe public location to get your message across. Alrighty, you go for the third one, man. On the last one, okay. <clears throat> oh, oh, I know how I'm gonna spin this one. All right, here we go. <clears throat> uh, dear lady of Lavrosi, uh, I think I spelled it okay. Uh, my wife and I uh, adopted a baby uh, that is a different race than what we are, uh, and I was wondering uh, what kind of advice you can give us. Uh, he gets along just great with our birth. Uh, daughter uh, and is a beloved part of the family but I might have some problems adjusting as he grows up uh, we we want to be encouraging and supportive of him uh, as, as as we can but we weren't sure uh, what would be an appropriate way to help him learn about his heritage since neither of us know much about it besides he killed a lot of people uh, signed totally designated dad I have the baby <laughs> dear designated I love you, and blessings on you for giving a baby a loving home. You are on the right path with helping him explore his heritage if he wishes. You can make a family activity out of uh, to try out some foods or games or other activities from his birth culture. But take your lead from him. Don't force him to do activities he doesn't like just because they are from his birth culture. Make friends with people from the culture if you can. Ask for advice on hairstyles, dress, or specific needs he might have. Alabast is such a big city with such a diverse population. I'm sure that you can find people who would love to share their culture with your son and your family. Yeah, but what if you like killed like everybody that my wife knew? I was under mind control. 
Look, dude, I'm just saying, and I was trying to be subtle about it. Shut up. You're not even in this universe. It's wild. Anyway. Man. <laughs> Fucking birds are wild, man. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> um, real fast. I like how ever I like how everybody quiet. There's nothing to say. <laughs> Uh, it's a soft contemplation. If laughter's the best. Do you mind if I shut this down? Was you want to go down to Greg? You want to go down to Greg? You want to go down to Gregor real fast? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're, you're really yeah, you're really trying to do Gregor. We'll, we'll jump around a little bit more because this is this is always fun. But please okay, cool. give us some give, give us some Gregors. All right. All right. All right. Dragon fetishes seem to be a big influence for today's paper, eh, dear readers? After such a cowardly strike by cowardly cowards, cowardly riding up in the sky upon back of not dragons, like the cowards they are! Cowardly, skipping out of range of Gregor's might. Troll cutter of Vader, the snowbank. The only natural impact tactics on dealing with cowards. With unrelenting pip covering dragons, Gregor figures that knowledge shall be shared about the bulk of the attack. Wavers. Wavers! We're similar in style and profile of dragons are actually comparable more to lesser wolves in fact the alpha being the horrifying white dragon silver king file drove it was beautiful with it thankfully dead and riders too cowardly to think selves waverns will begin breaking off from large groups until new alpha is established and once numbers are down distinctions from dragons become Claire, like their forebearers' intelligence when it comes to the hunt which we can use. Waverns take full advantage of sky when hunting, so much times they will be flying out of reach. To combat this, Brigo suggests cutting wings to tatters to force them aground. While still formidable with talons and fights, at the very least strikes with hammers and swords is vis viable. At very least, strikes with hammers and swords is viable, decreasing chance of friendly fire. And sorry again, fellow writer Ben. Gregor threw shot on apple in roasted boar's mouth was clear. To do this test, Gregor suggests usage of humble hand axes. While bow and arrow, also a pack of many arrows needed to make significant hole to force waver in the ground, while slashingness of axe head is nearly always great. Hand axes can be found in most stores. Swelling general provisions, though, Gregor strongly suggests no attachment. When young and green to hunt in homelands, Gregor has power at fleeing prey, only for it to be lodged in sprawling horns before a prey sprinted away. And no matter how much Gregor shall ever be found again, teaching great lesson about letting go of things lost forever. I apologize for fusing. You're as you're breaking up, dude. Can you drop out, drop back in real fast? Yep. <laughs> Fixed it. What a hell of a fucking dude. My god in heaven. I've been asked by one what? of our mods. To, you just, dude, holy shit. Crazy good. What? What'd I do? You just, dude. Oh, well, thank great. you. I appreciate it. <laughs> there we go. A helping hand by Finnegan Eskar. While the city wor starts to work its way, to ba ba way back to stability after the attack, many shops and homes were damaged in the attack. Majority of the damage is manageable, though there have been some cases of caved-in roofs due to wervin landing on the on them or debris. Most of these repairs are easily fixed, and they have the proper disaster insurances. Easy to pay off. Easy to pay off. With most shops closed due to the need, uh, with most shops closed due to needing repair, one local shop owner has opened his shop to the to the, his neighbors and businesses to help them in his troubled times. Many are aware of the roots of the Druid Potion Shop in the Lower Druidic District and ha has had a rotten case of luck over the past couple of weeks. The shop has been broken in and vandalized, its supplies have been stolen or tampered with, and just the other day, the owner locked the keys to the shop inside the shop. With that strain of bad luck lately, it seems like a miracle that the shop was untouched after the attack. 
Yeah, it was wild. I was in the shop when everything happened. I heard a scream next door as I came out and saw a worm on the roof to the shop to my left. Danny came out of his shop and came running over to me looking for help, said Mr. Coop Harkoff, owner of the Roots and the Druids. The Danny he spoke to was Mr. Durkle Cobblesmith, owner of the chain link, bracelet, necklace, gauntlet, and watch repair. His shop has suffered a roof collapse due to Werven landing on it. After Danny got over to us, the Werven looked at us, and after a bit, she just flew off. Then another one came out of nowhere and crashed into Sarah's shop, and she came running over screaming. Sarah, or rather Miss, Miss Talalarn, the owner of the small glass figurine and glass making shop. Again, the same thing happened, looked right at us and just flew off. It was weird. Both Mr. Cobblesmith and Miss Harn have deduced they survived due to the new pest control totem Mr. Harkoff had carved and put around his shop. Yeah, man, I had some issues with some mice and a couple of, uh, what are they called, like little annoying things. Well, I grabbed one of my old books and carved these little guys out. It must have made them too powerful. I guess. It's funny, a man in a nice suit was going to give me a thousand gold for all my stock of them. Mr. Cobblesmith told the man to buzz off. Told the man, Mr. Cobblesmith told the man to buzz off. With the repairs of both the glass shop and the repair shop still underway, Mr. Harkoff has opened his shop to his neighbors to sell their wares and services till they can get back on their feet. What happens to them? Su what happened to them sucks. And if the shoe was on the other foot, I'm sure they would do the same for me. In times like this, we need to look at our neighbors, our brothers, our sisters, and learn to let live, and to help them each out. Man, at least that's what I try to live by. Ah, uh, yeah. Pretty good. Don't keep him waiting. Romanchin, part of the entertainment district. Fuck. Uh, quick oh, shout out here. So much. Yes. Uh, I'm going to do a bit call out at the end here for uh, the bits that were dropped earlier. Drop the b -b -b bits. This is really fucking cool. Uh, you want you want pretzel? Ron. Ron's pretzel. That's what I'm talking about. That's a manly pretzel. That is a very manly pretzel. Strong mustache wax. I am serious. Next time a dragon has the fortitude to attack Alavas, it will face the wrath of Ignatius Strong. I don't know who drew that, but I love how, like, 50s that looks. <laughs> like, it looks... Romantic ad by Naked Square. Oh, my. Ooh. Oh, yes. <laughs> Insurance company in Alabas. That's what we should do. We should ensure people that their houses won't be destroyed and take lots of money. Panic. Remy, hear me out on this scheme, right? What do you think? You're, you're saying that we should bring people together to mm. take their money yeah. to ensure that their houses are destroyed. Well, it might be destroyed, but like, there's only so much you can do, right? But they'll understand, right? Right, no, no, Borky, I think what? you're missing the point of insurance. You don't insure people that their houses are destroyed. You give them insurance that if their houses are destroyed, it will be paid for. You're, you're running a scheme of some kind otherwise. Oh, I think I was hustled. No, did you, did you buy insurance? Well, uh, it made sense to me when I purchased it for it. But all I'm going to say is we're 10,000 more. Borky, Borky. Yeah. What if we talked about making decisions by yourself? Just kind of looking down. I'm in a pyramid scheme. Yes, yes you are. <laughs> Which is impressive. <laughs> That's the it's that string fellow. Refugee, yeah. <laughs> Relief, Re Refugee Relief Committee, Mondays, 3 p.m. at Barlow's Public House. Donations accepted. Whoa. That's crazy. Uh, anything else you'd like to read, Connor or Buskin? I mean, I can if you want us to, or you can call it. It's totally your call. I'm good for one more, I think. We should, uh... The War of Cats and Other Bad Cats, Dragon Edition, please. Oh, that one works. Connor, please, could you take us away for this Connor. One? Additional news has come forward since the dragon attack in Alabast about the cat war. During the attack, there were many reports about a litter of four cats riding pseudo-dragons. They were just biting the wyverns, said a woman on the scene. The cats were carried by the pseudo-dragons, dropped on the riders, and viciously beat up by said riders, then jumped off to be caught by the pseudo-dragons again. Prior to the attack, there were unconfirmed reports that the pseudo-dragons with the symbol of the Sweeties 
were seen flying around, picking up and dropping cats from opposing factions from high places. While the cats would inevitably land on their feet, they were very annoyed. Comment from the Sweeties was unavailable. But they were able to persuade one of the pseudo-dragons to talk to us. Well, the simple thing is, they give us our pick of scraps from the kitchen, which is enough when the scraps come from the culinary god, said a portly red pseudo-dragon via an interpreter. <laughs> With the dragon attack, there may be a lull in the cat war, but some may speculate it will come back. The guards still warn people to keep their cats inside in case it continues. And I have been asked to read this one. I read the wrong one earlier. Community right. cooperates to combat criminal crisis. Mm. <laughs> While Alabasta has endured many threats during its short existence. Sorry. I'm a dad now, so I have dad burps. Um, existence. Each new threat only strengthens... <laughs> only strengthens I'm hashtag dog dad each new threat only strengthens the city resolve the dragon raid yesterday was no exception as ordinary citizens banded together to defend their homes and lives tales of heroism abound from many small instances of bravery and kindness through the city as the woven riders attempted to abduct citizens to an unknown fate the city god though few in number made a good account of itself as its members rushed to aid citizens the situation became so chaotic so quickly that we had to rely on our strength and act independently, said Captain Stendon, commander of the Middle District Gar Squad Guard. We lost some good people, uh, but we were able to save a lot of lives. A lot more would have been lost if not for our warning bells and quick thinking by the citizenry. Alabash should be proud. Besides the guard, there were groups of private citizens who helped fight off the attackers and rescued others. A group of venturers aided by an off-duty member of the guard rescued several citizens and defeated a squad of woven riders kidnappers. Titus Sprinkleskin, a cobbler, recalled being carried off. <gasps> oh shit. Oh shit, Connor. Oh shit. We've oh, shit. oh shit. A young woman in a blue and silver leather mask leapt off a nearby rooftop and performed a flawless shooting star knee drop right under the neck of the woven carrying me. Forcing it to the ground, I landed in a snowdrift, but as the beast came down, I was able to, uh, to see the woman's known companion grapple the rider with a cobra clutch, while a dwarf grabbing a folding chair from a nearby furniture store, which he, she proceeded to break over the woven's head before applying the standard yet serviceable elbow drop to the stunned creature. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw a twin pair of human women perform what only could be described as a slingshot catapult clothesline combination where one whipped a woven around by its tail into the other's outstretched arms. When asked uh, if he knew the identities of these heroines, Sprinkleskin was able to give details. Was unable to give details. I don't know who these young women were or where they came from, but if I see them again, I'll definitely need to get their autographs. In other parts of the city, people provided aid and comfort to their rattled neighbors. Throughout the ordeal, Dolly Pastries didn't close and even offered free coffee to everyone who came in for the rest of the day. People showed appreciation for the city guard. One halfling gentleman named Ron delivered a basket full of hot pretzels and a pot of brown mustard to the weary guard detachment in the lower districts. You want pretzel? Ron! Ron pretzels. By God! The paper. They made the papers. <laughs> that is... That I'm is so that, happy. That is that is that is fucking wild, man, dude. That's I, crazy. Well, dude, you don't, dude. A slingshot cannibal clothesline is an amazing. It's like one of the best goddamn finishing moves you can. It's just so yeah, I'm, I'm a, I mean, I'm gonna, I'm an RKO guy, but I feel you. Oh, you're, you like the RKO? I like it when the adjust glasses, and adjust glasses and top knot. I liked it when it was called the diamond cutter. I was gonna say I like the diamond cutter. I actually, it's it's the same thing. It's the it's the it's the finishing move of well known uh, well known wrestling superstar uh, David Arquette. <sighs> you joke, he's back in the ring. He actually put on a decent match. No, I know, I know, but you had to say it, and it just it hurts. It ruins. The, hey, he gives a shit. You know, it's neat. That's fair enough. Like he gives a shit. He could just not give a shit, but he does give a shit. So it's cool. That's true. Anyway, streaming. Yes. Cool. Yeah, we are. We are. We're talking. But uh, guy. They're referring to the students from the girls' school. Oh my god, that's what it is! Hmm? They're referring- because we had an episode where we taught a bunch of students stuff. And Borky taught them all how to do wrestling moves. Are you serious? Yeah. That's cool. Now, I'll just you see, you try to, do that amazing to, to stick the bridge, you must be tippy-toeing when you flip- when you do suplex. And Borky was, like, suplexing this small little, like, dwarf girl. 
I almost killed a girl. Are I you okay? She's holding her thumbs up. And of course, we have the intelligence check. And of course. But guys, the, a suplex, a gnome. Sorry, it was a gnome. Ugh. But this is the Alabast Oracle, guys. And you know who brings us the Alabast Oracle every week? These amazing people. Vaughn Krieger as writer and Wervin illustration artists. Saichi Evie as Pip the Kobold and writer. Pui Suit 47 as Ben Ironwood, writer, various ads, and the layout artist. The Threadweaver, Sarian Rasmer, writer. Jim the Rabid Cow, Finnegan Eastgoff. Eastagoff. Eastgoff. Eastagoff. I think it's a writer, various ads, puzzle maker, and layout artist. Alcoholoc. Gregor, non-pug, writer. Aw, oh, that, okay, that makes me really happy. Hear that, Gregor? He's fucking passed the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> I agree, Citra King. Amazing people, every single one of them. And writer. Knight Hunter 66. Silren Thoriel, Thoriel, writer. Nicket Square, ad artist. Boom, 1327. Krako Tiamat, writer. Froggy's mom, aka Chehalem the Wiki mom, aka Chehalem Froggy's mom, our mod in the in our chat right now, Lady of Liverosia, Ludwig Hudenpile, writer, various ads, puzzle maker, and moral compass. Excellent. Thank you for your amazing work. We can truly change. And at Voodoo Soviet, Twitch Vaughn Voody Doody Doo, editor, lay editor, layout artist, Silver King illustration art, overall moral hazard. <laughs> Ooh, I see. <laughs> I see. I see. I see. I see. I well, see. I see. I see the difference. I see the difference between you two. Well, Voodoo Soviet again. That that Silver King illustration was fucking mesmerizing. Even, even Bosco has to agree. I would agree. Oh shit, that's crazy. But guys, click that button. Head over to the Alabast Oracle. And give them a follow, because it's well goddamn earned.